Carolina, Jonathan, welcome to Overford Radio. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Um, I have explored the concepts of a lot about what you all do, and it never ceases to amaze me. Uh, you know, and just my personal exploration, but also guests on the show. We're talking about gut health, talking about chronic illness, talking about sleep, all things that I think are all top of mind for everyone these days, regardless of what your health and fitness goal is. Um, but before I jump into that, I want to keep it on brand for we're here at Strong New York 2023. I'm curious, what are you all's definitions of strength? That's a good one. You want to set it off? Um, I think you should leave this one. <laughs> I have a thought, but here well, what you say. I mean, New York is a good definition of strength, by right? You know, perseverance, resiliency, entrepreneurship, mm. right? Uh, creation, uh, bringing things into the world, right? And, you know, making sure you want to develop things that could help broader populations in the community. I like it. Um, I like it. And that's, you know, we're New York based here. I want to make okay. sure to plug that, right? <laughs> we're, we're from New York. New York is in the house. Exactly. New York, house. New York strong. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's very true, right? Like, for us, strength is about being able to persevere through everything and anything, mm. and that includes mental, physical, all of that. And I think what we're building is really um, trying to create education and, and mm. uh, awareness on how your health has a really strong impact on mental and physical strength. Mm -hmm. And so it's really exciting to be here and just see everyone really participating mm. in this idea of strength. What you just said kind of reminded me of, I think, something that I wasn't fully aware of. Education is strength. The more educated we become, the stronger we become because we know what's BS when we look at it. We know when we're BSing ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. education is strength. And the more educated we can get, whatever that looks like, listening to this podcast, going to college, going to a course, reading whatever, like you are strengthening your capabilities as a human being. And community. Amen. Community oh, is huge yeah. for that. Amen. I got to give a shout out to my parents, public educators, my brother, public oh, high school wow, teacher. Wow. Um, you will get into this, but even our roots, like we spun mm -hmm. out of Harvard University, um, so a lot of technology. Never heard of it. <laughs> well, no. we're, New, we're New Yorkers. We don't care about Boston. <laughs> uh, but that notion of creating something through knowledge, but now making it accessible mm -hmm. to everyone so they could, you know, utilize that for, you know, their health and longevity mm -hmm. journeys. And, you know, I'm so glad you kind of brought that up because I feel like right now, as we're recording 2023, there are so many different ways that someone can educate themselves, especially when it comes to physical and mental resiliency, their health or wellness. But there's also a lot of misinformation out there. And when it comes to what we eat, what we ingest, what we supplement with, you can really improve your situation or perhaps really give yourself more work, we'll mm -hmm. say. So how are you all different? What is, what is the mission? What is the focus? And how, you know, through education, are you really changing the microbiome <laughs> landscape, we'll say? I mean, everything is full stack. And, you know, Carolina says this all the time. You know, there's a lot of companies out there that are based on formulation mm. and taking things that already exist and repackaging them and marketing them. Proprietary blend. E exactly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We're an innovation company. So we're developing new to the world microbes and probiotics that have novel functions that could help people in different ways, right? How so? So, for instance, you know, we talk about the microbiome and the notion of probiotics typically is like, oh, digestion and stuff like that. But we have probiotics that help us with sleep health through, like, the gut brain access. We have probiotics that eat lactic acid to fight fatigue and promote endurance. Wow. So now you're talking about gut muscle access. So all of this is through like technology and bioscience and really bringing innovation to the world, yeah. right? And that's how we're truly differentiated. Yeah. And I'd say, you know, when you think about the supplement industry, I think 12% of supplements in the industry are certified by a third party to mm. make sure that they contain what they say they contain and they don't. 12. 12%. That's like nothing. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, we do very rigorous tests on all of our products. So we're innovation-based, but we also are making sure that we're driving efficacy and the benefits that our products deliver. Mm. So clinically validating finished products, not just making claims based on some of the ingredients we have. Okay. And then we're testing to make sure that our products are clean and delivering exactly what it says. So NSF, Informed Sport, these are uh, organizations that really are checking for banned substances and making sure mm. that your products contain exactly what yeah. is in the label. So oh, I think that's huge. really important to note. You know, it's about delivering safe and efficacious solutions that 
are not just marketing and not just a lot of um, fluff that mm. people can't. It's hard. I mean, even us being educated and knowing the industry, sometimes it's easy to see something that's very well marketed and be like, "This is that promising. The truth? Yeah. This sounds amazing." <laughs> Damn it, you marketing got me. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, you know what you were kind of describing before we hit record is really, for me at least, novel. Yeah. Um, but before I get there, I want to kind of hit what you just said, Jonathan, about gut health for things other than traditional gut health goals. So wow. I think at least when I used to hear, oh, gut health, I got to do a cleanse. I got to do a gut reset. I got to focus on fiber, probiotics, prebiotics, just for the sake of the gut. But I'm hearing you say that, no, we're using gut health to focus on every other thing. Yeah. yeah. So again, it just every, how you started this is so amazing, like <laughs> strength and community and diversity. Mm. So first and foremost, just I think most people know this by now, uh, we have trillions of microorganisms in and on our body. Right, we're as much bacteria as we are human. We have a hundred times more bacterial genes in our body than human genes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this microbial ecosystem pretty much impacts everything we do, from a functionality, longevity, performance, and health mm-hmm. standpoint. Right. But to take it a step further, just about knowledge and discovery, most probiotics are decades old. They come from food, baby poop, the environment, animals, baby poop. Yes. <laughs> See, the things you know and the things you didn't know, right? Um, but, but these are antiquated, antiquated solutions. Think about what we're doing, and I mentioned this. Fit Biomics is a microbiome company, and what we do is we decode the biology of the most fit people in the world mm. to understand what's unique in their physiology that drives health. That's what I was hinting at earlier for the listener, just so we can connect all the dots <laughs> here, yeah. But then we translate those insights into next-generation health and longevity solutions. So even the concept of knowledge and applying it towards decoding very unique biological states Mm. so we could learn what drives health and now apply that to help everyone that's what fit biomics is doing okay so i have a maybe a little devil's advocate question to that so let's say i'm going to loosely break down the science here you're taking the gut health the microbiome of super elite high performers people that are in very good standing health and then some and then creating a product to then provide to people that don't have that why wouldn't we then, or why, why wouldn't we instead adopt how they got to that place first instead of taking another pill? I mean, it's or, hard, it's hard, right? Are, are you finding it's more these people like naturally just like it's a genetic situation or are you finding like, oh no, through these protocols, I achieve this kind of unique homeostasis? So for instance, just so, so you know, actually a majority of microbiome con- composition is not genetics based. Hmm. It's a lot of diet. It's a lot of environmental exposure, antibiotics, um, exercise, uh, geography, uh, anything you could think of pretty much not genomics based. But then you talk about why can't we do that? I think not everyone has access to, uh, you know, personal nutrition, nutritionists. Very no, true. Not everyone Very has, true. you know, the means to sort of eat like an elite professional athlete. Not everyone, for instance, our second product is derived from ultra marathon runners that run a hundred miles at a time, right? Not, not I'm not signing does. up for that. <laughs> exactly. you know, this is already so, a part of my life. Yeah. So it's kind of basically decoding what the result is of that, that drives optimal health and performance and making that accessible to everyone. I like because, that. Because we next gen health is right. Everyone deserves to have access to that. So, yeah. Yeah. I think another important point is, you know, this idea of accessibility. So not everyone can have the education or the means to eat the right way or exercise or have the time, right? If you're a single mother and you're trying to juggle work and taking care of your kids, or even if you're married, whatever, right? Like the idea of the reality of, Oh, just work hard and you can achieve it is not reality for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and Very so true, I yeah. think understanding the reality of what people are working with and how you can help provide mm-hmm. them or aid them in being able to achieve those goals. The other challenge is the reality of our food supply. Our food supply is not the way it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. We have a lot more toxins, a lot more pesticides, a lot less nutrients. So the vitamins and minerals that your mm-hmm. body um, is taking in from yeah. these um, foods are not it's not the same level so but it's like because getting of, access can be one solution but the access to more or to less nutrient dense food it's like ugh, we just yeah. kind of cut off one arm to say barely save the other you know and the reality yeah. is a lot of people are eating processed foods because of time or cost mm-hmm. factors and that creates um more opportunities for toxins to get into your mm-hmm. bloodstream so you have uh, leaky gut and a lot of these autoimmune conditions mm-hmm. that are coming up because of the reality of our food supply and so 
eating healthier is not necessarily going to be the only solution that's going to help get you to True. that point where you can True. actually be armed to support yeah. yourself. So that's where I think supplementation is important, um, but it's not a magic pill. And activity, diet, all of these mm. things are factors. So it is a balance of nature and nurture. But how do we help people achieve those goals mm. in a more efficient way? Would you all say that optimizing gut health as much as one can before supplementation is achievable only through diet, as in what we're eating or not eating? Yeah. What, what other factors can you unpack for us that might be contributing to less exercise. than ideal gut health? Yeah, exercise, um, activity. So a lack of activity actually impacts your gut microbes. Things like stress, um, smoking, alcohol, mm. all these factors will change the composition and the diversity of flora in your gut. And those all connect to your overall health. So even thinking about the gut as the second brain, oftentimes we really see that the gut has a big impact on it's very bi-directional so it has an impact on your physical well-being but also your mental well-being and then your mental well-being your physical aspects also impact your gut health I also just want to say a couple of things going back to your question and optimization but why maybe diet doesn't necessarily work um, you know I think traditional medicine or biomedicine a lot of times we look at disease yeah. Or sort of like what's broken, you know, and how do we correct it to promote health? But I think we're taking a fundamentally different approach. We're looking at what does work, what's naturally selected, right? Natural evolution that's driving health in like super performers mm. and then sort of learning from that to help everyone. Um, and to your point, even coming out of the pandemic, right? If you look at sleep, right? A hundred million Americans suffer from insomnia. It's the number two. One hundred million? A hun- one in three Americans suffer from insomnia. I had no idea it was that yeah. heavy of a statistic. Wow. It's the number two health concern amongst consumers, wow. right? And then you think about how are we trying to solve that, right? Okay, is it like, are we taking melatonin, which may be doing more harm than not? So think about the notion, you know, sleep is the number one performance-enhancing drug. So we're deco- Amen to that. Amen to that, yeah. <laughs> but, but think about a step further, decoding the microbiome of performers with optimized sleep patterns and identifying probiotics that can now help everyone with their sleep, right? So yeah. that's kind of where we're going with this. So Okay, so then I feel like we're kind of really getting into the products here. Walk us through what do you all do, how is this different, and what unique problems are you solving? You want to take this? Or- Go for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, I think, you know, uh, our mission is to fundamentally change the way we understand and optimize our bodies, full stop, right? So we're basically looking at the microbiomes of uh, super fit phenotypes and then translating that to probiotics. Some of the conditions we're going after, gut health, mm. sleep, fatigue, strength, women's health, recovery, mood. So we're building out programs uh, for all these different functional applications. Mm. Now, we've already solved sleep health and fatigue, and those are our first two products, right? So, for instance, our first product, Nella, is a daily probiotic capsule. You take once a day, and it helps with improved quality of sleep, fewer sleep disruptions, and it helps with your digestive. No way. Wow. So, yeah, very natural sort of microbiome, you know, intervention, if you will. Well, and I love, if I could just pause you right there, I love this approach because what it's also doing for the aware consumer is connecting the dots of, I think I have one problem or there's one area of my health that I wish was better and I'm focusing only on it, but actually it's most likely rooted in something else. Yep. And I think that is where that is where we maybe shoot ourselves in the foot by trying to do the right thing of addressing and solving one problem, but missing the mark of our body is a system of other systems. Yeah. And so I, I think that's huge. And I, I think it's a big takeaway for the listener. I hope they pick up on. Yeah. And to your point, and I'll just say to your point, system and systems, we start by saying trillions of microorganisms in our gut. So that's like the ultimate system in our body that we need to pay attention to. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is we can't keep masking symptoms. And that's what, as a culture, we have been trained to do. You have a headache, pop some Tylenol. Don't worry about whether it's because of inflammation or because of lack of sleep. Like, what does your headache really cause from and address that? It's pop some Tylenol or Excedrin and call it a day. And so yeah. I think the idea of masking the symptom versus addressing the root cause is really a mind shift that we need to get into. And um, I forget what you said earlier, Jonathan, that prompted this, but... Think about how much happier we could be when we improve our gut health. Specifically, last I checked, the stat seems to be getting a little bit higher and higher. 67, if not 70% of our oxytocin or serotonin, excuse me. 90. 
it's 90 percent serotonin comes from. Yeah, yeah I, I can't keep up. <laughs> you were, you were, percent of immunity. It's made in, in our gut. Yeah. So imagine, so if you're literally unhappy with your life, just unhappy, maybe unexplicably. Of course, that could be a lot of different other reasons, but focusing on our gut health, allowing our body to like really get to a place where it can create the molecule, the thing that we need to feel happy. You, you might think it's like, oh, my partner, my life, my job, my this. It could just be your gut. Yeah. Could it could be. be all those things. But it could be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> could be. Could be. Well, I yeah. think the research continues to prove the gut-brain connection, right? We continue to see more and more evidence around specific microbes correlated to things like um, depression, schizophrenia, um, ADD, even Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, oh, like yeah. so many yeah. neurological diseases that are connected to the gut. And like we just learned here from Lisa Nicola earlier on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. It's very true. Yeah, you know, I think, again, it's tying back to environment, nature versus nurture. If you look at our dietary habits, high salt, high fat, high sugar, it's depleting our microbial ecosystem. Think about antibiotics overusage. Um, we're not sleeping well. We have high stress. We're coming out of a pandemic. So, you know, Carolina has an amazing way of looking at this. It's really looking at folks and phenotypes that thrive in modern society, people mm -hmm. that have been able mm -hmm. to be resilient to those symptoms and still perform at an elite yeah. level. I just want to say it's not about athletes. You know, athletes, believe it or not, are as rare as centenarians, elite athletes. They both represent the 0.01% of the human population. Right. But yet stand out the most because of what they can accomplish. Exactly. Yeah. So they have these very unique attributes in terms of endurance, strength, mental toughness, recovery. But for us, think about that. That's just neurology, immunology, metabolism, right? We can break all that down and understand it. Exactly. Hell, we can run a test for it. Exactly. Yeah. So we could see what's working in people that are resilient to the issues with modern society mm. and now sort of apply those learnings to help people confront modern society, right? Right. So full right. circle. Yeah. What's, um, besides symptoms that we may have been talking about, what would be one or a couple maybe recommended testing protocols that someone could explore for hey, I think I got some gut health issues going on, but I'd like to really make sure. Like, what can they do to really, like, get a lab analysis for that? There's a, there's plenty of microbiome sequencing companies out there, uh, you know, kind of like the 23andMe's, except okay. for, like, microbiomes and stool yeah. and stuff like that. But I think these symptoms are fairly, you know, for instance, constipation. You know, maybe you don't have regular bowel movements. Um, you know, again, I think if you're not able to sleep during the night, right? Mm. I mean, these things are, you don't really need a, need a test, right? To sort of... That's true. You just need a, a hard look in the mirror, maybe. <laughs> exactly. Or a look in the toilet. Yeah, or you can or look at your Probably a look see, in the toilet. Yeah, okay. it's very indicative. You can look at the Bristol School model and Let's go there. See. Okay. Let's go there. Let's Break it down. <laughs> I want to look at my poop. Yeah. I want to figure out from that fecal sample what is going on in my gut. What should I be looking for as like a red light, yellow light, Green light. I think one is frequency. How often are you going to the bathroom? Um, so I definitely think frequency is a big aspect. If you're ideally, you should be going at least once a day. Um, you know, depending on how active you are and what you're eating, how much fiber you're taking in, etc. But if you're going once a week, you have a problem. If you're going every three days, you probably have a problem. Um, every other day, maybe you're okay, but really every day would be <laughs> ideal. <laughs> also, I'd say, you know, just formation, like how smooth it is. Like, obviously, if it's not to take it there, right, but like super watery and like <laughs> diarrhea. This like, is a safe space. Yeah, space. I mean, we're here know, to learn. We're here to learn. <laughs> but on the flip yeah. side, right, if you're on the toilet and it takes you 20 minutes to get something out, right, and you're constipated and... So, you know, a nice log, right? Mm -hmm. A smooth log mm -hmm. is probably what you would want to aim for, right? I had a guest on the show, shout no out Dr. Mary Party. No <laughs> I think she told me from like your wrist to your elbow crease, ideally, it is like the ideal length of an elimination, it's like a healthy <laughs> log. I was like, Mary, you're killing me. Like, I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty regular guy, but that's. Uh, that's, you, like a, that's a big thing, right? You got to get some more probiotics, man. <laughs> it's a, yeah, the right. human body <laughs> is truly remarkable, mm. what you store in there and what it produces. So, uh, well, Who was, um, was it John Wayne, I think? <laughs> I don't know if this is true or not, but the story is like when he died and they're doing the autopsy or something, he had something, I think like 20, 15, 20 pounds or something crazy of just stored fecal matter, gut crap 
it, up in there. It truly was the Wild West. You know? I mean, he was just, you know, eating a cow a day probably at that point. But, you know, I, I do enjoy my steak. But um, we've come a long way in, in terms of understanding the human body. We've come a long way in terms of what we can test for and even just bringing education to the public and like a health promotion aspect of, hey, if you're feeling like this, looking like this, not feeling like this, not looking like that, here are some things that you might want to be looking out for. What do you think right now is one of or a couple of the biggest pieces of misinformation when it comes to gut health? I think one big thing is that um, people think you only need a probiotic if you've taken antibiotics or if you mm. have IBS, and that's not necessarily the truth. I think there are people who a probiotic might do more damage, but for a lot of people, a high-quality probiotic actually does a lot of holistic good in preventative and um, mm. holistic health. Um, I think the other big myth is the idea that all probiotics are the same because they're not. And I think people have tried probiotics and like, well, I've tried and they don't work. And I'm, I'm, I'm a culprit, right? Like I'm in my mid forties. I had my first colonoscopy in my early twenties. I have had IBS my whole life. I've tried so many probiotics, nothing worked. Mm -hmm. And for me, Nella, I mean, when we first did our open label study before we were even, we just got our first samples in these little Mylar patches. I was like, I'm going to just start trying them. Game changer. Like, I mean, I won't talk about poop all day, but like game changer. Because especially well, for women, it's, it's, it's a, a big, big deal. Yeah, and yeah. women, 75% of women will experience some kind of GI symptoms at least a few times a month. Mm -hmm. That's not saying that's how many people have IBS or digestive issues, but they will experience those symptoms. And they're connected to a lot of factors. And women's health can be a whole other topic we can dive into and spend an hour mm -hmm. podcast on alone. Oh, when my but, wife tells me, she's like, I pooped today. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> thank I'm God. so Thanks glad to Lord. hear that. <laughs> like, when I don't hear that for a couple of days i'm like what's going on what's yeah. going on yeah but it's i mean i think the biggest thing is just they try probiotics they think it doesn't work and mm. so they become skeptical which i understand because i was the same way so i do think having a really good quality probiotic that you know has been clinically validated mm -hmm. where testing has been done um like for us we have a money back guarantee you don't love it we'll give you your money back because if it's it amazing. doesn't work for you then we don't want you to be That's paying amazing. the price for it yeah, right? yeah. and we see amazing retention i mean we have customers that have been on a subscription for 16, 18, 19 months. All right, because it all right. works that yeah. well. Uh, so I think there's a lot of misconceptions around like probiotics are just if you have IBS or if you took antibiotics and they're only if you, you know, they're all the same. And so mm -hmm. those are some of the big areas. And we're starting to see more evidence and research and papers come out talking about the, the gut mm -hmm. muscle connection, the gut brain connection, mood, physical activity, performance, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I think there's some of those myths are, are definitely. Yeah making their way there's more education i agree but. i agree yeah but also it's very important be a study of one n equals one you know do your homework do due diligence but also pay attention to what your body is telling you yes. about a certain situation like a lab can tell you one thing but i'm here to tell you this is health coach chase coming on <laughs> like your body is going to tell you what it needs what it wants yeah. pay attention to those labs and more quantitative markers for sure but it can say one thing and you can feel a totally other. You can feel yeah. a totally other. Yeah. I mean, the other thing too, not necessarily probiotics, this is maybe a tangent, but, you know, 60% of all U.S. adults have at least one chronic disease, right? 60% of American adults yes. have at least one chronic disease. It's the number one leading cause of death in the U.S. It costs this country up to $4 trillion in healthcare costs. Wow. Right? Wow. So think about what we're doing in terms of like biotech and, you know, we're talking about a 10-year billion dollar journey to develop a drug to treat disease. But I think, you know, this notion of health and health care, maybe there's a misconception there, right? We shouldn't necessarily want to treat diseases. We should mm -hmm. try to prevent them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I think that ties into our gut microbiomes and probiotics, right? So as Carolina said, it's not just about okay, I'm traveling and I have diarrhea or I have IBS. It's actually a form of preventative medicine. Yeah, yeah right? truly. Helping you with yeah. your sleep, helping you with your fatigue, right? Helping you with your strength. Probiotics are about holistic health, and that's what we're trying to promote with Fitbiomics. Amazing. Well, the last question I ask everybody is to, like, bring it all together and bring it home to the theme of the show, and that's how can we take this information, how can we apply it into our lives so that we can move forward, live a life ever forward? What does that mean to you all? Do you, 
how do you live a life over 40? You know those two words. Yeah, I think I think it's such a holistic um, and unique thing for everybody. Uh, so I, you know, it comes back to a lot of our values as well, and this idea of being surrounded by people who support you in your journey, people who teach you and help you be a better person. Mm-hmm. Um, whether it's you know opening your eyes to uh, opportunities for you to be better, or educating you on certain topics, or just supporting you on your journey, whether you're in your ups or your downs. And I think um, those are really uh, key aspects. I, I think our physical health has such a huge impact on our mm. mental health. And right now we just see such a huge increase in um, even younger kids experiencing a lot of depression and, and mm. you know, just really anxiety, challenge with life. And it's Coming just, out it's, of post-pandemic, it's, it's just, I, I think we're, we're only tapping into, unfortunately, the amount of health problems, especially mental health, yes. that are going to be, you know, years to uncover. Yeah. And I think that's where just the idea of being kind and paying it forward and mm. helping people without expecting something in, in return is mm. very important for me personally. And so this idea of constantly giving back and thinking about how do we help support the whole so we're all mm. really collectively yeah. progressing and moving forward. I'm with you. I'm with you. Jonathan, how about right. you, Ben? Yeah, I agree. Like, I, I growing up, I was a ball player. I played at St. John's. And, uh, you know, basketball community is phrased like each one teach one right and wait say that again each one teach one i like that i like um, that and you know just my story again uh, i got my pizza from nyu i got i did my postdoc at harvard and everyone told me like you have to start a biotech company in either boston or the bay area i was like mm. no <laughs> right <laughs> like for me it's one of my goals to make new york the leaders in next gen health Right. right, and it's about building a community here. New York doesn't need any help getting put on the map, but I like <laughs> I like the different angle. I respect that. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. But I, mean, I think <laughs> well, to add to that, New York brings a level of diversity yeah. that is often not in bioscience or Very the true. medical field, Very whether true. it's looking and studying at different uh, ethnic backgrounds, men, women. Women were not included in clinical trials until 1993. Like that is just 93. Disturbing. Yes, and most research, most uh, protocols, like. So much is not based on the female phenotype. It's what a huge a, detriment a small to society. Male, which is not okay, and that is not how a woman's body operates. So, you wow. know, there's a lot that we can do by thinking about diversity, about whether it's through gender, through mm. phenotypes, through ethnic backgrounds, lifestyles, you know, the dietary mm-hmm. styles. Like, all of these things are important. And so, for us, putting that into our science, both from a discovery, but also an efficacy perspective, mm. is very important. And so, I think New York really is a, a place where we can really bring it all together and, and build yeah. that diversity. I love it. Amen. I love it. <laughs> well, what's next on the horizon for you guys? Well, besides taking over New York. Well, <laughs> we, we want to change the world, right? I mean, we already have a product on market um, that's helping thousands of people with their sleep health and their gut health. Next year, we're launching our second product. Again, a next-gen microbe to eat lactic acid and combat fatigue. Think about daily cr- fatigue, chronic fatigue. And then we're building programs. Mm. We're not stopping there. We're building programs for women's health, for strength, mood, recovery. Anything you could think of from sort of a health and longevity standpoint, we want to decode it and now yeah. recode that into next-gen probiotics. Okay, so I lied. I'm going to ask one more question here. <laughs> uh, you kind of just sparked a little interest in me. I, so by the time this goes live, I think I'll have done a little 2024 <laughs> predictions episode. Um, there are a few things on my radar that I really think are kind of novel and some that are finally getting the, the regular attention they deserve for the masses. And I think inflammation, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. inflammation, mm-hmm. the way that um, metabolic health has been trending, for lack of a better term, the last year or so, in my, at least in my world, I feel like inflammation, getting key markers for inflammation like CRP, getting all the like extensive metabolic panels, but also focusing qualitatively on inflammation in the body and the gamut of things that it can do for you. What's your take on that? You know, maybe through the lens of gut health yeah. and inflammation. I mean, Caroline already mentioned it, the notion of leaky gut that could cause systemic inflammation. I think you actually had the right stat, but the wrong physiological parameter. So actually, 70% of the immune system interacts with our gut. Excuse me. Okay, okay. So you, okay. Had, you had the right Okay, statistic. there we go. Um, so Sometimes we, I don't work good. <laughs> but we fundamentally believe, again, you know, gut immune access, inflammation, this could all be modulated uh, and corrected and prevented mm. through probiotics in our gut microbiome. And to your point... You know, even this term, not just inflammation, but inflammaging 
you know, and how inflammation is relative oh, for longevity. All right, I'm co-signing all that. I'm t- I'll give you credit. <laughs> I, I'm co- that's amazing. <laughs> Inflammaging. Yeah, it's that's a term wow. that's been in there. But you're right. I think next year it's going to become more and more mm-hmm. like household. It's not going to be niche. It's it's going to be right. like no. This is just how we think about health and, and longevity. Yeah. So well, also to kind of reverse engineer a little bit, I think right now there's a, a new breath of fresh air under centenarians and longevity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Dan Butner's work has recently yeah. been highlighted again on Netflix. Um, thanks to people here, you know, like Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, um, people like David Sinclair, the whole crew over at uh, Dr. Chris Wrench at uh, Amazentis and Timeline, just looking at mitochondrial health, longevity, yep. the game. We're seeing a lot of things such yep. as mitochondrial health, focusing yep. on that. But what really we're looking at is a reduction in inflammation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when we look at the people that are still squatting, you know, a body squat down and get up and, you know, 90, 95, 100 years old, reduce inflammation, you know, how do we unpack that? Yeah. So I'll just, if I may, three things. We're going quickly. Yeah. One, everyone should Google Vianella, right? And, you know, elite athletes. But again, you mentioned mitochondria produces lactic acid as a result of strenuous exercise, Mm -hmm. right? It's sort of a, a marker of fatigue. That lactate goes into the gut where an organism, Vianella, could eat it up and convert it into anti-inflammatory metabolites. No way. Yeah, so that's what's coming out next year with well, the biomix. Uh, well, also so, Nella. And wow. Nella has anti-inflammatory properties as well. But then even think I mentioned, you know, programs and strength and decoding strength phenotypes. Think about muscle health, but not just from like bench pressing. Think about it like sarcopenia and healthy aging. Right, yeah. So again, yeah. all these things are connected, performance to health to longevity. So... Um, I, I think uh, the, you just said sarcopenia reminded me. I recently had uh, Dr. Kelly Starrett and his wife, Juliet, on the show from um, uh, The Ready State. And they had an amazing, this new book out, this amazing research quoted about, we're looking at longevity. Of course, there are a lot of biomarkers we can look at that, that help with that. But really, the number one strength test is just like leg strength, being able to stand up from a seated uh-huh. position unaided. And what they do to measure that is look at, you know, m- leg strength, quad strength, basically. And so... Think about how fundamental that is, something so easily someone can focus on that is going to reduce inflammation, like you said. <laughs> but like, if I can just focus on leg strength, I'm adding maybe potentially years to my life. Oh, it's, yeah. By the way, I'm going to take it full circle. You start, what does strength mean to you? Longevity, right? Exactly. Exactly. Being as strong as possible for as long as possible. Amen. You yeah. want to thrive in life, not survive. <laughs> there we go. I love it. <laughs> well, this has been great. Thank you guys so much for your time on the show. Where can my audience go to connect more with you guys and what you got going on? Which, by the way, I'm going to take this as a little sign from the universe. My dog, which I see you got your pup here, <laughs> yeah, by the way. Yeah, I'm here. Um, she's been going through it with some, like, I assume gut issues, like skin itchiness, oh, wow. rashiness, and her name is Nella. <laughs> and so we are going through it with her diet and stuff right now. So I'm taking this as like, all right, I see you. I see you. I see you. <laughs> the universe yeah. is rooting yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where can we go? Is it just Nella? Oh, yeah. So um, you can come to our website. Fit it's www.fitbiomix.com. Um, you can also follow us on social media uh, at Fitbiomix. Okay. F-I-T-B-I-O-M. Oh, my God. M-I-C-S. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long this day. This happens, yeah. It's I've been, been talking all day. day. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, at fitbiomix.com uh, or uh, Instagram, We'll plug Facebook, all the links all to, that, to everybody. Yeah. We got yeah. you. Well, Carolina, Dr. J, it's been great having you guys on the show. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. And if Thank people you. want, you can use the code Strong New York for okay. 25% off all on right. Nella. So definitely check us out. Come to our website. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a link for you to add I the might show need some for Nella, actually. <laughs> we'll give you some samples. Is this okay for pets? I... You probably unofficially. I mean, I give my like, <laughs> Nella for Nella can. hashtag. Yeah, Nella for Nella. Nella for Nella. I mean, Nella. <laughs> Look, anything that'll help her out. I buy a probiotic for my dog, and yeah. it has these three strains in it. Amazing. Uh, so. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Got health awesome. is important. We'll, we'll take it. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.